With the use of a cheap, common food additive, you can make the most delicious mac and cheese you've ever had. It'll have the gooey, silky smooth quality of processed cheese combined with the deep, complex flavor of real cheese. Basically, this is a fancier version of my dad's mac and cheese, which is made with processed American cheese. First, that additive, sodium citrate. I ordered this from a major internet retailer. It tastes like salt, but slightly sour. It's perfectly safe. It's in tons of stuff that you probably eat. We'll use some of that in combination with a pound of cheese, any cheese. I'm grating up half a pound of Gruyere and half a pound of smoked Gouda. I think any strong semi-firm cheese would work great with this. Put some water on the boil for pasta. Now for the cheese sauce, you need a quart of any water-based liquid. Dad uses milk. I'm gonna use three cups of milk and one cup of white wine because that's the kind of thing I would do. Goes into a saucepan on medium heat and then the magic ingredient. One tablespoon plus one teaspoon of sodium citrate. Same as four teaspoons. This is the stuff that's already in the American cheese my dad uses. It's an emulsifier. It'll stop the fat in the cheese from separating out as it melts. The first time I tried this, I used two full tablespoons, roughly extrapolating the proportions from a popular recipe on the internet, and look what happened. The sauce came out way too viscous. It boiled over, it settled on top and kind of broke. After it cooled, the texture was dry and almost chalky. Don't use that much sodium citrate. With just four teaspoons, this recipe comes out perfect. Then some seasoning. I put in half a teaspoon each of mustard powder and garlic powder, a little shake of cayenne for Chef John, and then some black pepper. Dad just uses the black pepper, but put in whatever flavorings you want at this stage. Just probably don't put in any more salt. Sodium citrate is a salt, and the cheese is naturally salty too. Then I put in half a stick of butter, cold, all in one chunk. I want this to melt slowly. We're trying to form an emulsion here, like making mayonnaise. If you introduce too much fat all at once, it could break. All the fats would just separate into a big oil slick. Now I'm just going to whisk in a handful of cheese, one at a time, nice and slow, for the same exact reason. There are recipes online that tell you to do this with an immersion blender to make the emulsion form. That is manifestly unnecessary. As you can see, whisking does the job just fine. This went slowly for me at first, but I had all the cheese in after five minutes. I didn't wait until each handful was fully melted, I just waited until it was melty. If you don't use the sodium citrate or a processed cheese that already has it in there, you have to use something like a butter and flour roux to thicken and stabilize this sauce. By stabilize, I mean keep the fats from separating out. But in my opinion, mac and cheese made with a roux-based cheese sauce always disappoints. The texture is just gritty. This sauce is gonna be way better. You don't even need to bring it to a simmer or anything because we're gonna bake it. Just get everything melted in and turn off the heat. My dad uses large shells. I'm gonna try these pipe thingies. I hope that's not actually pronounced pipe or something. Salt the water and parboil for five minutes only. I've said before that I think any pasta shape is fine, but dad wanted me to say that the best thing is a hollow or concave shape that'll hold cheese sauce in each bite. Drain it after five minutes, and then I'm just gonna bake it in the same oven safe pot that I boiled in. Spray it or butter it or something. Pasta goes back in, then the sauce, give it a stir, cover it up, and it goes in at 350 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes covered. After that, uncover it and bake until brown on top, about another half hour. Pull it out and let it cool down for 20 or 30 minutes until you scoop it out. You could do a breadcrumb topping on this, by the way, but I prefer to just let the cheese brown and let the top layer of shells or pipes or whatever go all crunchy. That tastes insanely good. I would, however, replace the Gruyere next time with sharp cheddar. This needs strong cheese, I think. And look at the texture as I squeeze that sauce out. It is as velvety as nuclear orange nacho cheese, but with a totally grown up, sophisticated cheese flavor. I will never make this any other way again. Don't be scared by this unfamiliar ingredient. Order some and give it a chance.